I'm uh, trying to convince the tidal stream developers that they're wrong to copy exactly from a wind turbine technology, just adjusting the, the, the density of the fluid. And uh, using the Betts equation is okay if you put a few in. If you want to put a lot in, it gets less and less relevant because uh, if you're greedy with the wind turbine, the air will go over the top or around the side. But in the tidal stream, it can't go into the seabed. It can't go into Caithness, it can't go into Orkney, it can't jump over your equipment. And I need to have a concept of what are called the flow impedance. This is the determination of the water to get through a passage. Uh, and you can define it as the increase in head divided by the reduction in the flow rate. And we really need to understand that just as much as we need to know what the density of water is to design these things. And one part of the impedance would be the present flow losses going through the channel. Nobody really knows what they are. Uh, easy way to measure it would be to measure the slope of the water to get the head difference times the flow. That would give you exactly the right number. No one's done it. At least if they have, I can't get the data. I'm trying to find out what the present flow losses are from just a single velocity measurement. Uh, now, if you take the histogram on the left of the astronomical forcing function, and you take the histogram on the right of what the actual velocities are, they seem to be rather different. And what I'm trying to do is to uh, apply different loss mechanisms in these different blue lines here to the original driving function. You can see this is a square wall loss. There's not very much drop here compared with the ratios there. So we've got a square law loss. I'm putting in different losses and trying to match the histograms. And it looks at the moment as if there's at least an order of magnitude more power being wasted now than you'd assess from the, just the total kinetic flux. If this is right, you need to have a different design of turbine. Next slide, please. Can you do that without it? No. And what you need to do is get rid of all these enormous gaps between rotors. You've got to try and fill the flow window as much as you can. Have your rotors with a vertical axis, like rectangles rather than circles, as close together as you can. And you uh, want to have uh, a, 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 a very much higher output. The, the diameter of these has to be about three times the water depth. So that comes out around about 200 meters. And uh, if that was designed with bets, it would be about 80 megawatts. If it was designed uh, with uh, un understanding the flow impedance, it would probably be double that. And so we're talking about 160 megawatts. You want 10 of those to equal a Hinkley point. The, everything below the yellow, is re except these legs, is rotating. These bits are rotating, red bits are rotating. And the power takeoff is all inside the yellow bit. It's a thing called a quad ring cam. It's a bit like a rather bumpy railway line with um, the, the bumps driving rollers. And uh, uh, the other interesting thing about it is the vortex is the vortices between different rotors, they're all contra rotating, should cancel one another out. And we want to get a cleaner wake behind than what comes in. And I'll be working, I hope, with Angus to model wakes of contra rotating rotors. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Oh. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.